you have a false sense of security. A knife is more dangerous than a gun. The survival rate of a pistol, not a rifle, but a pistol, or a revolver, a pistol, the survival rate is higher if I get shot two or three times than if the guy had a knife. A knife is very, very dangerous. An old crippled lady with a kitchen knife that's crazy could kill me. All my training could be done. Okay? So, you don't want, until you get some level of skill fighting empty hand, you don't want to pretend that you can take a flame knife out of someone's hand. Hey guys, Wolfman Combatives here, showing you some nice defense stuff dealing with a knife. is extremely difficult if you are not able to fight one-on-one -on -one in all ranges of combat, meaning MMA, plus headbutts, biting, eye gouging, and all the dirty stuff. If you're not comfortable with that, you're not going to be comfortable fighting multiple bear opponents or one guy with a knife. Very dangerous. A old lady with a kitchen knife could kill you. I'll be the, I'll be the attacker. The, the usual attacker just looks like this. Is someone just kind of like comes up, they hide the knife behind their leg, and they're kind of like, and, bah! and they throw a machine and stab you as many times as they can, four to 27 times, until you're bleeding and bleeding out on the street. So that's the reality of a street attack looks like this. It's just this, bah! and that sting is pumping into you over and over and over again. That is most knife attacks. Hey, whoa, chill out, man. Chill out. to him instead of my relationship being up here. If I didn't have the distance, I'm closer and he's already in my face, maybe I got stupid and I stayed too tight instead of making my distance in a fence. And he starts to go back, I could go here. I could go for a punch and a jam. I'm coming in to follow his draw. So he's going for something, could be a pistol, could be a knife, and I'm gonna punch him here and I'm trying to jet in here. And hopefully I follow so he doesn't get the weapon out. It's half out, whatever, it falls to the ground. Uh, if he managed to start getting it out, go ahead, grab. And I went late, even here, boom. And now I'm hitting him over and over and over again. And I have my arm extended uh, to keep uh, it straight, to keep structure. I don't want it bent where he's stronger than me and he can pump it into me. I want to keep it out play and keep my weight going backwards. Okay? So, ideally, I want to punch and jam it and follow the draw before it's even. Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman, thecombatsystem.com. I got MMA, I got M grappling, catch wrestling, doing combatives, doing knife defense stuff. Uh, a little bit of pressure testing now uh, against the grab and stab or the grab and punch. And you should always react a lot of your stuff if you're really in a combatives mindset, whether you think it's empty hand or, you know, maybe has a little shiv or something, uh, a, a tiny little pocket knife or um, a screwdriver. You got to be careful. Okay, so you should react the same. I have another video showing these techniques. Now this is a little bit of pressure testing on it and a follow-up option technique as well. Okay. See, I would have just ran and got out of there. Someone's coming up to me to stab me, so I had to be behind your leg and do a little walk up. I'll go out a little further this time. I'm out of there. I'm just going to keep going. This guy's maybe just crazy running around stabbing people. If i got to re-engage him to save other people, if I'm a skilled big guy like I am, you know, that's that's another story. Or you're a law enforcement officer or security or whatever, the military. Hey, man. Hey, man. What are you doing? Back off. Yeah, I don't know if he's got a knife or not. I didn't, maybe didn't even see it. But I see his hand back there. If the guy's hand's behind his back, you assume he's got a gun or knife or some kind of weapon. So that time I thought about engaging, I turned my strike to the, the, to the neck or to shoulder, whatever that becomes like a jut style, look in the other video, turn that into my... If I already picked up that someone's trouble, whatever, dude, hey man, I don't want your trouble back away, leave me alone, I already de-escalated the situation, 
or whatever. If this hand starts doing funny stuff and backing away here, if I really think that it could be something, I might just hit this guy, chin him, and run away. Okay? So I can either go long hook and just here, because I want to get away from the weapon hand. Or I'm going to do this. If I start, uh, yeah, be in, be in front and then start to reach back. Ooh. I'm going to, uh, like, arm drag to the outside. Come to this side. As he reaches back, just go slow. As he reaches back, I'm going to go one, two, Kali forward, blading off this way. And I'm really going to just so jam this into the neck. Yeah, you can see it's a jolt. Even lightly, it's a jolt because the artery and the pressure points there. Okay, so like, give me some flack. We'll play a little bit and then reach back. Hey, whoa, chill out, man. Chill out. Okay? Okay. So what's important is he started to bring a weapon into play. I don't know what it is. Could have been a gun. But I got to the blind side and I'm running. I'm out of there. If it's a knife, which most likely it is, him coming in front and getting me is, as he's starting to bring this out, I'm getting away from it. That's what matters. Okay, you see that last time I really kind of jutted him pretty good. Axe hand, like an in, into axe hand defense. Even if you are caught here, that's what you gotta do. And he starts going for my stomach. Okay, go ahead, turn stomach. Shh. Okay, we've worked on that last week. This is something, hopefully you react before a grab is made, which a lot of times in the street, it's gonna be a grab and a sewing machine stab. So, if I see this, or maybe he's hiding the blade behind me, and he's just walking up, you're like, hey man, back off, back off, back off, and he reaches, I'm gonna go. So he's hiding, you don't know what's going on. It could be to punch me, it could be to stab me. I'm out of there. Let's do it from the side. <clears throat> Hey, whoa, chill out, man. Chill out. Whoa. Sometimes verbal distraction is how people attack. <laughs> Do you know where Brighton Bean is? Hey man. Back up, back up, back up, man. Use the face back to it. Work on this. Okay. Hey guys, Dan the Wolf in the combat system.com just kind of playing around with baseball pat position now, different positions. You want to get to a Russian two-on-one most of the time, unless you're doing really loose work and you're good with like the Russian martial arts systema. But highest percentage chance you're gonna look at getting to a Russian two-on-one. Uh, instinctually, a lot of people might just react and jump back against a stab and end up in a double grab. Or even, you know, God forbid, do like a, a karate X block or something. But you might turn that into a, a baseball bat, double wrist grab on the wrist. Important there is to off balance the guy, pull him to the ground, get him to stab that knife into the ground so it sticks or against the cement it might disarm or passing the outside most likely to a Russian two-on-one. If a punch or a kick or something happens in between, that's okay, but really two-on-one, just like submissions in general, two hands on his one hand control the weapon hand. Those are positions you want to drill out of so they're mapped into your mind and nervous system. So maybe I react like this, and then oh shit, I'm in a knife fight, I gotta go. Most, the best is probably to draw him down and away in an angle and spin behind that Russian two on one. Boom. Okay, if I put a headbutt in there. So now, oh God, now he got to go. So I'm going to yank him this way and come to my two on one. Then I can use my body weight, my shoulder, my chest to bump him and work against the elbow. Ready? 
comes here even better for me. Hey man, back off, back off. Hey man, back off. Whoa. Abduction stuff. If you put a knife to my belly, my throat, my kidneys, my liver, my back, he holds a knife on me to abduct me, to take my money, then I can maybe work it. So he either wants to kidnap me or wants my money. Okay, what do you want? Well, why, man? I'm sorry, why? I don't want to go with you. I don't want to go. Oh, where is this thing? Now we're in a knife. system.com dealing with a knife very dangerous look at my other videos where I talk about it don't fight unless you have to but if you're in threat of your life this is the first video on dealing with a guy uh, abduction type hold using the knife as a form of getting something out of you whether he wants your money give it to him he wants to take you to a second secondary location fight him you don't go into a car especially as a woman you don't go into a car or in a back alley um, where someone can do their further crimes on you which usually results and rape and death and maybe in the opposite order. So, um, what we're talking about is someone putting a knife to your neck from behind. So, as Oleg here comes up behind me, he wants something from me. Now whenever I decide to go, I might talk my way out of it and just, hey man, please, please, you know, I'm, I might get a hand up here without telling him I'm struggling. If I give him a lot of force, then he's in a fight with me. But if I go like, hey man, hey, hey, what do you want? And I, I figure him out. Maybe I can just throw my wallet on the ground and distract him. Maybe he's high on drugs. 
you know, but if I throw my wallet to the ground or, or even my cell phone or something of value, car keys, he might pay attention. But if I feel like he's um, abducting me now, maybe I'm traveling, maybe I'm in some other places of the country where they kidnap you, okay, and ransom you. Technically now we'll deal with the knife. The knife's at your artery. Getting caught in the neck, getting that artery slashed is what you want to avoid. So if I'm going to make a movement, what I want to do is get both hands in play. I'm going to put this one here and attach it to me. At the same time, look at me lift my elbow. To begin with, to train it, you could just throw your hand on top of your head. I know it looks silly, but pay attention now. He's got a little pressure here. Look where the blade goes. It's here. Now it's not there. Now that's a good thing. So I can work in here. And now this, I may be a big guy, but I'm not going to wrestle with him bicep style. I'm going to attach it to my body. That way when he's flailing around, I might get some nicks, but hopefully not deep enough to kill me. So I'm going to work in here. Now, from there, you can either go under or you can turn out. If you have the strength to work against the wrist, turn him out and hopefully get the elbow uh, underneath your shoulder, you can work an elbow break as a fulcrum and then work from there. Take it, control it, take the knife, deal with him if you got it, or break away. Back off, man, whatever you got to do. So ideally, if I can turn it out, I'll turn it out. But there's other options. I'll go over that one again. What's important here is same time, shoulder up, get that away from attach it to your chest. And then you fight from there, work from there. If your instincts are to hit or whatever, that's fine, but really you got to deal with the knife hand. I would turn it out, grab the wrist, turn it out. Okay, see I got like a wrist break on him right here. He's up on his toes, right? I think right now he's raised up. There's where I can take this knife and I work out here, okay? Because that's what was open to me. His wrist was at a worse angle that time. I didn't need to go against his elbow joint. I just went against his wrist joint. I'm going to go here. Now, the energy, because the elbow is high, is going to be to slip out under the back door. Okay, I don't like going that way, but it's okay. Now I feed it to him, and even wood hurts with my body. See, I, I cupped his elbow, and I went in to stab him with his own knife with my body. I don't like going out in general in a fighting rule because you can end up in like a headlock or bulldog choke position. But if that's the energy that's there, that's the energy that's there. So, um, even in, even in a car abduction, someone was check your back seat. Always be on condition orange. You know, uh, check around you. Okay, but even if he was behind me in a car, he was hiding in the back seat. If I get this to me and lift it, the blade comes away. Now I'm not going to say dealing with it from that point so easy, but I might jam the knife into the roof of the car as hard as I can so hopefully it sticks there while boom I pull his hand off the knife the knife stuck in the roof I twist his wrist I get the knife I turn around and I start stabbing the guy so uh, you know be aware of uh, that kind of stuff we'll go uh, let me go with you a second we'll go with someone taller thanks we'll like hey let me let me go with you a minute so now I'll go with someone taller because the legs a little shorter than me so you see his elbows down a little bit so just so you can see a couple different things now He's got this to my neck deeper now. A little more dangerous maybe. It's not right on my artery, but it's going to be a little harder to slip out. But still, if I do this, I can still get the knife away. Yeah. And if I wanted to turn my hips and go a little teapot at the same time and really go out and then feed it back to him, I can. So here. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. Okay, that's my Okay, so now he's a little tighter and he wants me to go somewhere. Right? So maybe you're dragging me backwards, dragging me backwards. So now he's taking me somewhere. Yeah, hey, let's go to your car, let's go somewhere. Uh oh, I got he's got bad intentions. He doesn't just want my money. Then it's go time. So I'm gonna go, feed it, feed it, and try and use your body. And go, go, get up. Okay. <coughs> so he's taller now. And it depends where that elbow is. But I can still articulate his elbow up, which puts the knife down. Work against his wrist and his elbow. Snap that elbow. Get the knife. Still control this work underneath. And I also have the knife. <coughs> so 
let's say we're in the car, here, twist it, you released it, fine, elbow in the back seat, or if you still had the knife, jam it into the roof. See this more dangerous. I'm gonna, hey man, chill out, chill out, and bring my hands up. Chill out. So, going at the right moment is important, but think about space. No one ever thought about raising their shoulder to take this way. I got this from my seminar instructor, uh, George Pogacic, who's in Michigan under Vladimir Vasiliev. Um, very, very highly skilled guy, and if you can, look him up, and uh, something to think about. Hope you guys enjoyed it.